What if we would get a chance to start a new life? In his short novel Les Jeux Sont Faits, philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre plays with the idea of starting all over in the same lifetime, despite the decisions we have made in the past. Even though we have free will, are we capable of deviating from the path that we have laid out for ourselves, including the burden of responsibility that comes with our past choices? Or do the consequences of our actions govern our will? Les Jeux Sont Faits, in English called All Chips Are Down, tells the story about a woman named Eve and a man named Pierre. They meet each other in a park shortly after they were officially declared dead. In the story, the dead still live among us, as ghosts. They can see us, but we cannot see them. The realm of the dead is, of course, a crowded place, because people from all ages of mankind inhabit it. Both Eve and Pierre died because of betrayal. Eve is very sick. Her husband, André, is poisoning her, not only so he can receive her inheritance, but also because he wants to marry Eve's younger sister, Lucette, and receive her dowry. While grooming the beautiful 17-year-old Lucette, who is devastated by her sister's condition, André continues to poison his wife until she dies. Pierre is the leader of the resistance that wants to overthrow the regent. He meets with his comrades because they have planned a rebellion that should start the next morning. When Pierre goes home, he is approached by one of his men, Lucien, who admits that he was captured by the military and told them their plans. He asks for forgiveness. Pierre calls him a traitor and shortly after that, Lucien shoots him. After they die, Eve and Pierre discover that they are invisible to the people they try to address. They have become ghosts, and after they are officially registered as such, they are free to wander wherever they want. Unsurprisingly, they are drawn to the drama of their past lives. Eve tries to stop her husband André to seduce her sister Lucette, and Pierre tries to stop the rebellion because the regent knows of the plans. It doesn't take long before they realize their powerlessness over the situation. Because they are invisible, they are nothing more than spectators. Even though they are free to roam the earth, they cannot intervene or connect with the living. Thus, there is much unfreedom in their freedom. In the park, when sharing their experiences, Eve and Pierre become aware of their romantic connection. However, as ghosts, they are unable to really feel each other. Not much later, it turns out that there has been a mistake. Eve and Pierre were destined for each other. They should have met when they were still alive. But due to the circumstances, this didn't happen. Therefore, they get a chance to return to the realm of the living. And they have 24 hours to prove their love. If they succeed, they can stay and build a new life together. Even though Eve and Pierre are very attracted to each other, they seem to prioritize their own personal affairs. They create much confusion among the living because they can't support their claims based on what they have seen when they were dead. No one believes them. And even though they try to cultivate their love, they fail to disentangle themselves from the lives they were living before. Tragically, both Eve and Pierre end up dead again and become ghosts. So how free are we? Could it be that freedom is just an illusion? Our lives start out as empty canvases and it's up to us to fill them up. We begin to entangle ourselves with the environment and to define ourselves and our values. We build relationships, we take on responsibilities, but the more ownership we take of the world, the more the world takes ownership of us. Yes, we are free to choose what we do, but the effects of our choices will always resonate between ourselves and the environment. If Eve and Pierre ignored their past lives, they could have fully focused on their love, but what bloomed between them in isolation seems of small significance, when they are pulled back into the drama of their lives after they return. Both have a chance to prevent a disaster happening to their loved ones. So would they be willing to carry the consequences of their inaction and sacrificing their loved ones for a selfish cause? Clearly not. Thus, according to Sartre, freedom of choice is real, 
but we're still shackled to the consequences that are completely out of control and inseparable from the path we're on. In other words, the path dictates our will. And with absolute freedom comes absolute responsibility. Even if we get a chance to start over new, it's almost impossible to let go of what's laid out for us. We're already too enmeshed in our environment, and that which gives our lives meaning plays us as a puppeteer. That's why we are free to walk away from our loved ones, but we are most likely pulled back when they are in dire straits. That's why when the chips are down, we seem locked in the fallout of our decisions. Sartre presents different phases of freedom. The dead experience the freedom to go wherever they want, whenever they want, but they are also imprisoned in the role of spectator. From this point of view, freedom lies in the ability to interact with our environment and influence the world with our choices. On the other hand, we have free will, but for a great part, our will is determined by our entanglement in the world, our values and our willingness to carry the consequences. We always have a choice, but with our choices comes the burden of responsibility. Thank you for watching.